Welcome back to Reading Bear. Today, we will take a look at some new Pori Ranch stories. And if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. Let's go! The first one is titled, A Hole Decides He Can Park Anywhere He Wants. A few weeks ago on a very nice sunny weekend, some of my neighbors had a large multi-family garage sale. I wasn't involved in it but wandered around looking for more stuff I don't need. They'd put up signs for blocks around and a lot of people were stopping by. Parking spots were scarcer than full sets of teeth at a tobacco spitting contest. I'd about decided to head over to a barbecue food truck that a guy operates on weekends to pick up supper for the family, when a BMW pulls into my driveway and spits out a fat middle-aged man, a skinny, pinch-faced woman and a teen girl with an I don't give a shit about anything expression. He didn't just pull into the foot of the drive, near the street, he pulled up past the sidewalk about six feet from my garage door. His way into my private property area. Maybe he thought he was being considerate by leaving room for a Mercedes and Audi to park, also. I called out, hey man, you can't park here, this is my driveway and it's private property. He didn't even turn around but said, don't worry about it, we won't be very long. Hey, come back here and move your car, I called after him. Still not turning around, he gave me a dismissive wave with the back of his hand and kept walking toward the garage sale tables. My neighbor was watering his lawn and also not involved in the weekends, by my junk, frenzy looked at me with a, what the hell, just happened face. I said, Bob would you mind parking your beater as close as you can to this German a hole? Bob had considerately parked his go to work car in his drive instead of curbside to make room available for shoppers. Bob agreed and now was parked about 10 feet past the sidewalk and well onto my property as his car sat, spooning the beamer. I opened the garage door and backed my car out within Frenching distance of the shiny, white, unwanted guest. Yeah, I'm talking menage a trois, here. I decided to grill some chicken since I wasn't going anywhere for a while and set up my grill about 2 feet from the driver's side door. I had a family pack of chicken thighs in the fridge and decided to sacrifice a few of them by placing them skin side down over the hot flames. Naturally, they caught fire and sent urgent smoke signals to the twat waddler and his family that something was very wrong. What the duck are you doing? That's my car. How'd your shopping go? Did you find anything interesting? I asked. Third house down had a few nice cast iron pans you might be interested in. Stop what you're doing right now. Just then, my wife who'd figured out what I was doing came out of the house with a hastily made sign that read, parking $25 per hour. Half hour minimum. What the duck, he screamed. His face now the color of fresh arterial blood. My wife propped the sign up against the garage and now I can see that she's wearing her S&W.357 Magnum, a beautiful little short-barreled, stainless steel revolver. I'll be inside, if you need me, she said. I have to finish skinning those squirrels for that stew. This is my wife's idea of a joke, we don't eat squirrels. After seeing that my wife was a heat packing, squirrel eater, the screaming monkey ducker calmed down a little and said, I just needed a place to park, okay? I'm gonna call the cops, you can't do this. No, it's not okay, not even a little. I can't do what? Park on my own property, grill some chicken. Are you saying I can't do that? You can't block my car like this, he said. Technically, I'm not blocking your car, my neighbor's car is behind yours, not mine. And I don't know where he is right now. Don't worry about it he won't be very long. I turned and gave a wave with the back of my hand. I went inside for a beer and waited. Six ounces later I heard a knock at the door. I opened the door and raised my eyebrows, inquiringly. Look, he said, we got off on the wrong foot. I interrupted him saying, no, you got off on the wrong foot. What the hell is going through your mind that you think this is okay behavior? Have you called the cops yet? I'm looking forward to that. Look, I'll pay your bullshit parking fee, just let my car out. I didn't know that at that moment my wife had turned the sign around and raised the rate to $50 per hour. Okay, let's go, I'll move the grill and try to find my neighbor. He saw the repriced sign. Christ on a cracker. I don't have that much money. My wife had put her gun back in the safe but she gave him the look that when I see it, I'd know I'd better start learning how to sleep with one eye open. 
She said, I don't believe that you're out hitting garage sales without plenty of ready cash in pocket. Last chance or I'm calling the cops right now. This could take hours to settle, his face started going up the vibe your spectrum as he counted out the cash. Okay, now would you move the ducking car? Hey Bob, would you move your car for this gentleman? I said. Bob walked out my front door and said, sure glad to. I handed Bob a 20 as he walked by. The funny thing is, the a-hole's wife and daughter never said a single word during this entire time. Not. A. Word. I started to feel very sorry for them. The next one is titled, I warned you not to park here. This all happened when I was a young man, around 21 years old. I was sharing a flat with another young bloke in a Perth suburb, Australia. I had not long had my first car, an old 1972 beat-up old Ford Falcon, you know, base model, slightly rusted, air-conditioned floor etc. I'm 50 now, so quite a long time ago. I loved my old Ford. It was roomy, comfortable and reliable. As a part of the large block of flats we lived in, each flat was given two parking spaces, one under cover and one open. My spot clearly numbered with a two in a large white paint digit, was the open space. All was well for a few months. I was getting along really well with my flatmate, and we got along with our other neighbors. Enter entitled person. He drove a fairly new BMW, nice and flash. Whilst I was at work, he took it upon himself to allow himself to steal my spot. In Australia, the Ford Falcon was one of the largest cars on the road, and parking it was difficult. It would be classed as a mid-sized in the USA. I get home, and my spot is occupied. Damn. Off I go to find someone else's spot to borrow for the night. I ask Unit 1, as I know they don't have a car, and they were quite accommodating to me. Still. I go inside and write a note for the owner of the BMW, and neatly place it under his windscreen wiper, hoping that a polite request would do the trick. Nope. Next day, same thing. Now I'm getting a little irritated. I repeated the previous night's efforts, but made the note bigger, and a tad ruder. I know he got the message, because the bits of paper were gone. Day 3 same again. It's the weekend. Unit 1 couldn't lend me their spot, as they had visitors. Okay, fair enough. I park my big old Falcon across the front of the BMW, blocking it in, I wasn't going anywhere that weekend. Next morning, BMW was gone, somehow it managed to slip the coupe. I steal my spot back again. That evening, the BMW did to me what I did to him, blocking me in. I see red. Upset me is not nice me. I'm patient. I bide my time. Monday morning, he's gone, and I go to work. Monday evening, yep, you guessed it, spot taken again. Fair dinkum, does this guy think he owns the spot? Revenge mode. New note, on a sheet of A4 paper, written on his windscreen with big black texter, the kind that goes through the page. Full sheet is stuck to his windscreen with that horrible masking tape that always leaves something behind when it's peeled off. Next day, note gone and BMW still in my spot. Okay, same again with the note. Rude to the extreme kindly explaining to the BMW why in the seven dark levels of hell he shouldn't park in someone else's spot, maybe even referring to his dubious parentage. I then get out the big gun, my silicone gel. I used the entire tube, plastering every last square millimeter of the page, and stuck it to his windscreen, right in front of where his eyes would look through at the road. Try ignoring that. When I go to leave for work next morning, the BMW is gone, nowhere to be seen. I saw it further down the car park a couple of days later, with a brand new windscreen. Needless to say, he never parked in my spot again. In fact, neither did anyone else. Ever. Edit, to all you readers who are wondering why I just didn't get him towed, here's why. Think about it. I was young and naive at the time, and didn't even think about towage. Now different story. Then, I just wanted him to go away and leave me alone. I wasn't even aware at the time I could. So, horses for courses. The time was the early 90s. I was in my early 20s, skinny and not particularly strong, and with no idea on how to fight. I only had my intellect. The guy upset me, I didn't know which unit he was in, never saw him at any time, nor did he approach me when it was obvious which unit I was in. I started off being polite, and progressed gradually downwards from there, culminating in the final offensive. Context? 
I got what I wanted. He was sorely inconvenienced and seriously embarrassed publicly for the entire large block of flats to see. Everybody would have passed him and the plastered note on his now unusable car. Plus, since nobody would help me, I had to help myself, and of course, warn them all not to mess with the weakling from flat number two. Having him towed would have produced less humiliation, as he could have merely shrugged it off as a broken down car. It worked. The next one is titled, I just wanted a pressure gauge. I had just got my first car. Well, first in the sense that it was the first car I had paid for by myself and the first one that wasn't older than me, was in halfway decent condition. It was my child. I was going to Walmart to buy a pressure gauge for the tires, and there were two open parking spots right next to each other. Just as I pulled into the left one, a woman driving a fancy looking black car pulled into the right one next to me. I took a minute to grab my bag and get ready to head into the store, and then I heard a slam. I looked out the passenger window and the woman had hit my car with her door as she had opened it. And not lightly either. I watched her get out of her car and look at me, right there, sitting in the driver's seat of the car she'd just assaulted with her door. Then she just turned and walked off. Oh no. You don't get to do something like that and then not even acknowledge it. I'd have been fine with just an apology, but nope. Just looked at me and then went about her day. So I went into the store. I bought my pressure gauge. I went back out to the parking lot. I keyed her fancy black car. And I drove on home. An apology goes a long way. The complete lack of wonders too. The next one is titled, Another Parking Petty Revenge. This could be malicious compliance but I'll drop it here. This happened about three years ago after I had handed in my notice, I'm currently trying to dig out the emails and photos. I worked for a small company, six people including me, that were half owned by a law firm, 40 plus people in that building. The offices were in a courtyard with car parking spaces in the courtyard and under the building. Our company had four assigned spots, I wasn't assigned one. The law firm had 15 spots or so, so there was clearly an issue with people not having parking spots. However, two of the buildings were empty and there were 10 unassigned spots, you can imagine people getting aggy but not saying anything and just getting in earlier to get spaces. Then one of the buildings had a new company move in and the available unassigned spots dropped to 5. Things were getting more and more tense and people started getting there earlier and earlier. I took it for what it was, they weren't our spaces and we shouldn't have been parking there anyway, if I was too late or lazy to get there for a spot then I didn't deserve one and would have to find somewhere else and pay. This happened a few times but on the whole I just got there early. A woman who worked in compliance at the law firm didn't do this, she instead thought it was her inalienable and undeniable right in this cruel world to have a parking spot. She would be damned if, like the rest of us, she would get up early to get her free unassigned parking spot. No, no, she wouldn't have anyone, especially not a 23-year-old boy from the small company, taking her parking spot. She would not pay for a parking spot and waddle to work, like others had to. I beat her, and all the others, into work and got my unassigned spot. One day she was late and couldn't park and so she parked awkwardly in a space that wasn't really there. The next day she had to park in a paying area. She was not happy. She complained to HR lady. HR lady emailed all employees saying that no one is to park in spots unless they are assigned as the company has not leased them. Full stop. Fine, I thought, if that's the rule we all adhere to then I'll stop and stop I did. She didn't though. She continued to park there. So I also started parking there. She didn't get her spot and had to waddle. She exploded to HR lady and I got an email telling me that I was breaking the rules and had to stop. Indignant rage coursed through me, a stubborn, white hot anger that could not be bridled. I felt apt to go up to HR lady and compliance squawker and lay down thunderous and ground breaking assertions. I managed to contain myself, I decided that no, I would take a quiet, petty approach and hang them by their own petards forcing the squawker to waddle. Waddle and pay she must. I replied to HR lady's original email with a courteous response explaining that I wasn't the only one and that others, mentioning no names, had been parking there too, with pictures and timestamps of compliance squawker's car there along with the map showing allocated parking and how that car was in an unassigned spot. I received no response and continued parking there up until I left the company three months later. 
I later found out from a friend I worked with that the HR lady had been so infuriated that I had responded as I did, and that her compliance squawker friend couldn't a space, that she took it to the partner's meeting. The big monthly powwow with the heads of the law firm. Here she would crush the beetle that had dared defend himself, and throw others, especially her squawker friend, under the bus. The finance partner laughed her out the room saying that not only did I have a pair but that I had a point, if she had said no one is to park there then no one is to park there and to leave me alone. The petty revenge in all this was forcing a smug, selfish and self-righteous squawker into waddling a little further each day and paying five pounds a pop for the privilege. The next one is titled, Fire the Entire Kitchen Staff? Fish in the Ceiling Time. This happened many years ago in my city. I worked as a chef and in one of the restaurants I worked in we had taken over the space from a restaurant which went bankrupt several years prior. I was brought in to get the kitchen sorted as when the owner of the restaurant found out he was failing he did not take care of the staff at all and they thusly sabotaged the entire kitchen. He literally came in on a Friday night after service and informed the entire kitchen crew that they no longer had jobs. Kitchen workers being the pirates and scoundrels that they are decided to have some fun. One of them put every pot he could and set them upside down on the burners, totally charred the duck out of them. Another hit the fire suppression system, wrecked the line. The best one though is this. One guy takes a whole salmon, head and all places it on a sheet pan and hides it in the acoustic tile ceiling, very well in fact. It took six months to find the fish. You can imagine what the place smelled like for several years after that. The next one is titled, Not Returning My Equipment? You're not getting the data then. Worked for a company doing commercial air conditioning control systems. I was issued company laptops along with other tools when I started. Fast forward a couple of years into work, my laptop hard drive failed on a Friday at 3 p.m. Monday I had to be back on the site at 6 a.m. to start up a piece of equipment. So I called my project manager and told him what had happened. He told me to call the IT manager, we'll call him David. After telling David what happened the only thing he could offer is for me to come in Monday morning and get another laptop at 8am when he arrives. Being computer savvy, I offered to go buy a new hard drive and reinstall everything so I could meet my 6am deadline. David told me to go ahead and to save my receipts for reimbursement and to log the time spent. So I went to the local big blue box store with the yellow tag and bought a new hard drive, a 500GB hybrid drive which was a major improvement over the 120GB 5400 revolutions per minute drive before. Installed the drive and all the software. Come Monday I just had to re-license my software, luckily it had a 30 day demo mode. The following week I turned in my receipts. David tells me they won't reimburse me for the drive because it wasn't an exact replacement for the old one. I told him that they didn't have those drives anymore and this was the cheapest I could find, it was on sale and cheaper than the 250 gigabytes drives. David still tells me no. Fine, if I ever leave, I'm taking the drive with me. Whatever. Was David's reply. Fast forward to about two years ago. Company changed hands and I was getting the short end of the stick. By this time, I was now the senior field technician and technician training lead. I had my machine full of past and current projects and emails and everything else. I was pretty much on my own and wasn't required to submit reports or paperwork until the job was completed. So they had no idea what the status of any of my projects were at. I decided to leave the company. Interviewed with another company, accepted a job making more money and better benefits doing the same thing I was before. Made the plan to submit my resignation on that Friday, offering to stay to help bring a new hire or another tech up to speed on my projects. So I went in Friday after work and had a meeting with my operations manager, call him Rick, my project manager, call him Mike, and David. Told them I was quitting and presented my written notice. Rick read it and handed it to David. Rick then proceeds to tell me, thanks for the offer, but we are going to go ahead and make this your final day. What about my projects? It's all on your computer, right? Yeah, but I'm taking the drive with me as per my agreement with David. I didn't approve that. Fine. So I handed over my laptop and such and that was pretty much the end of it, or was it? The following Monday David calls me. Hey, what's the password for the machine? What password? For the encryption? Couldn't tell you. And hung up. 
The software I was running would erase the drive after 20 failed attempts. I found out from Mike, my old project manager that quit and went to another company, that they kept trying to guess my password and wipe the drive. I still have the contents of the drive that I backed up the night before. My drive was backed up nightly to my NAS when I was at home. The next one is titled, The Stupid Ex Roommate. Okay so I was really good friends with this girl and we lived together. I kinda fell for her and we started dating. Then she wanted to have a threesome and leaves me for the dude we had the threesome with. I'm paying our way in the apartment we're living in and she says she's gonna pay me back and start helping soon when her other bills flatten out. So a few months go by and her little sister tells me her and this guy are planning on getting their own place once the lease is up and not giving me a dime. So I move out I take everything with me within 20 to 30 minutes I brought a bunch of people with me and left them there. I put myself $4,000 in debt doing it. Then I shut the power off a few days later. That's not the end though. I still had some of her mail and I knew I needed to give it to her. I just so happened to be on my period at the time. And I was wearing a pad. I took every envelope and wiped. On each side. I placed the mail on her boyfriend's porch and left. The last one is titled, Happy Bin Day. With a child on the way and a lockdown in place in the UK we have had to order an obscene amount of large packages, pram, baby carrier, etc, which has led to a large amount of boxes. To make it slightly easier last week I put all the large boxes between the cardboard bag and the bin for two reasons, one, having them in the bag would have taken up all the space, two, due to it taking up all the space it wouldn't have been easy to get out. Turns out the binmen we have are sticklers for the rules as they had just left it, due to this I then had to carry the large, folded down as much as possible I might add boxes to my back garden, cue revenge mode. I knew it was going to rain within the following week, it's the UK you can guarantee it most weeks, and I also know everyone hates dealing with wet cardboard so I put all the cardboard as best I could into the bag and just left it outside. Last night when putting the bins out it was sodden as I placed it out front, and with a look of glee whilst drinking my morning coffee I saw the recycling men come by and struggle to get all the wet cardboard out of the bag to put in their lorry as it wouldn't come out with them just shaking it. Thanks for listening.